So this is a continuation of chapter 11, which is dealing with character strings. In this particular section, we'll look at manipulating character strings. I'm going to start out by setting a vector named animals to the following three animals, pig, cow, and new. And then in addition to the animals, I'm also going to set some adjectives. So let me put those adjectives here. Those adjectives will be a pink pig, a brown cow, and we'll go with lonely new. So there you have it. We have just set two vectors, and here they are in alphabetical order. And each of those three vector, each of those vectors contains three elements, and each of those three elements are strings. Now the next thing I'm going to do is go over a couple things that you can do with these. One thing you can do is there is a two upper function. And what this will do is it will take all of the letters and place them in uppercase. There is also a two lower. That won't do anything with our adjectives or our animals, but it would affect, of course, um, something like letters. It would take all those uppercase letters and switch them to lowercase letters. Back to the substring command again. Here it is. We'll give it the animals vector. And this is the start and stop. So this will begin at position 1 and end at position 2 for everything in the animals vector. And you can get PI out of pig, CO out of cow, and GN out of new. Another example of the substring command, we could say this time we only want to look at animals sub 2, and in this case it will only look at the cow, and it'll begin in the first position and end in the second position, so this will just give us CO. The paste command is quite useful. You can paste the word big onto animals. Now there's a problem here, and you can probably guess what's going to happen by now. This right here is a vector of length 1, and this right here, as you can see up above here, is a vector of length 3. So what it's going to do is it's going to recycle the vector of length 1 and attach it to each, each of the uh, elements of animals. So you get big pig, big cow, big new. You can also paste together two different strings. So we could take the adjectives and put them in front of animals, and when you do so, you get pink pig, brown cow, and lonely new. Here is another example. We're going to paste those together, but this time what we're going to do is we're going to add a blank right in here between the two. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add an S after animals, so we're going to make them plural. And then we're going to have a separator, that's SEP, of double quotes. So that is no separation between them. So let's see what this gives us. Notice what we've done is we artificially added an extra blank in here, but then we didn't have any separation here. And what that did was it allowed the S to just get 
added to each one of the animal names. So a little bit of a hack there to um, get these to be plural and yet have just one space in between each of these uh, variable names. Now, if you want to add one more parameter here, you could have this very th same thing and then add to the sep argument a collapse argument. And if we say collapse equals and put comma space in there, here's what happened. It actually took the three that we had, pink pigs, brown cows, and lonely news, which was a three element vector, and it collapsed them into a single vector. And in addition to collapsing them, it added a comma space after each. So we now just get one long string, which is pink pigs, brown cows, lonely news. So that's some of the things that you can do with paste. Give you one more example of recycling here. If you say paste and you put together the letters A B and C as your first argument. Then for your second argument in paste, you can put in a 1 colon 6. And then if you put sep equals quote quote, what you'll do here is you have a vector of length 3 and a vector of length 6, so there will be recycling. And what you get is A1, B2, C3, A4, B5, C6. I've used this in some applications where I need to put together formulas that contain strings in them. And this is a very nice way of getting to those. Those of you that might be familiar with Unix know that there is a grep command. And this is a pattern matching command. So you can see from the pop-up here that the first thing it's looking for is the pattern. So let me put in an ARY as the pattern. And let's let the, um, the x value that is being searched be month.name. In this case, it tells you that the first and second months, namely January, and February are the months that contain a um, portion of the string ARY. So it did the pattern match. No other months have that. Now another thing that you can do is, let's say you want the abbreviations of those two months. You can use the one and the two and have this as an argument to month.abbreviation. And that way, the 1 and 2, and you'll have Jan and Feb there as the abbreviations for the months that contain the string ARY. Again, if you know a little bit about grep, there's another thing that you can do, and that is you can search at the beginning of a string in this fashion. And let's say we want to, again, look at month.name. In this case, the caret before the J says only search the first character for a J in each one of those strings. And in this case, you get 1, 6, and 7, which is to say January, June, and July all start with the letter J. This can also be done at the other end. So you can say grep, and you can now say BER dollar sign and you can search the month.names for um, ending with the string BER. And in this case, there they are. If you want to see, rather than just having 9, 10, 11, and 12, if you want to actually know what are those month names, you could go month.name and use 9, 10, and 11, 12 as subscripts. And this will tell you September, October, November, and the most burr month of all, which is December, are those months 
that uh, end with the uh, um, three letters or three letters B E R. Finally, last thing, let's say I set an object A equal to the following C sub X equals 1, Y equals 2, and Z equals 3. This is not usually the way we uh, define the C function, but you'll see what's about to happen here. Now we have a, uh, an object A, and it is numeric. It's got three values, one, two, and three, but you can see what uh, our studio did up here. It told us that there are names associated by, by this, and it calls it named numeric. If I were to display what's in A, the following happens. This X, Y, and Z, which are known as metadata, get put on top of the vector, X, Y, and Z. So you can think of these somehow as labels, these names, and you can put them on in the, in the fashion that we did here, or you can use the names function to put them in place. Well, this is the end of what's going to be covered here on the videos for character strings. There's a lot more in the book, so I'd encourage you to read it and look at the other topics that are brought up here on character strings.